they just started high-fiving each other, talking mad shit for me. They're like, yo, my little cousin got balls. My little cousin's a G. My cousin ain't scared of nobody. Brooklyn got their own Batman now. The baby's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Podcast called Stoops to Sages. Please give it up for Gastor Almonte, everybody. Let him hear it. So, I'm from East New York, you know, and, and when you grow up in East New York, you tend to have a bit of an edge to you. You know, um, as an example of that, uh, this past Thanksgiving, you know, my uncle came up to me. He's like, Yo, Gastor, you know, your father once stabbed somebody over Snapple? <laughs> And then he just walked away. <laughs> like, you know, that's how you end conversations. There's no more details I want to that. Apparently people die with fruit punch all the time. <laughs> but it occurred to me that my father just never wanted me to know that side of him, you know? He was trying real hard to protect me and he came up with this plan. He decided, you know what, I'm gonna buy a house with my sister. I'm gonna buy it next door to my other sister. You know, we could shield him from the neighborhood. And it was smart, you know, I had my mom, my dad, my aunt upstairs, my aunt next door. And together they could kind of keep me from the hoodlums in the area, you know, protect me. But the problem was is that my cousins that lived upstairs and next door, they were the hoodlums in the area. <laughs> you know, I was, I was five years old, my cousin Miguito was 14, he lived upstairs, my cousin Carlos was 15 next door. You know, and it was a challenge because they were cool as shit. Like teenage drug dealers are amazing. You gotta understand, every day I'm going to school, these dudes, teenage drug dealers are real pro truancy. They don't care about schedules. They don't do shit unless they want to, you know? So I'm seeing this every day and I wanted to take part, but I couldn't, because Carlos and Miguito got into this real shitty habit you know, of scaring the fuck out of me. <laughs> All the time. You know, they had this like pale white face mask with green hair, it looked like the Joker. And they used to put it on and hop up from behind walls and scream in my face. It wasn't cool, I don't appreciate you laughing at that, man. <laughs> they did this shit relentlessly. They would scream in my face, I'd run inside crying. My mom would hug me, she'd tell my dad. My dad would go outside, he'd scream at them to cut this shit. And they'd leave me alone for a couple weeks. We had a system. And this went on for like a year, you know? And I was okay with that, but the problem is, you know, I was about to turn six, week of my birthday lands during Halloween week, you know? And my father believed two things. He said, one, I'm six years old, he thought that I should be able to handle these things on my own. And two, they were 15 to 16 years old at this point, they're still young enough where they could get away with wearing masks. So in the week where I should be thrilled, I'm getting older, I'm scared, because my dad gave these two gangsters carte blanche to scare the fuck out of me <laughs> all goddamn week, shit ain't cool. Despite that, I woke up in a good mood. My mom made pancakes, crushing it in school too. My two plus two game was crazy. <laughs> Nobody was seeing me. I felt good, was dressed up. I would walk out the apartment door, got to the front door of the building, you know, and Miguito's opening the door for me because he lived upstairs. He just, you know, got up early to cheer me up. He said, happy birthday, little man. I said, yo, you're being strangely polite to lady, Miguito. I don't know what brought about this, but keep it up, I like it. And I walked out the door, cheery as shit. Then Carlos jumps out from the side, got the mask on, screams in my face, he's like, bold! And I'm like, oh shit! And I run inside screaming, I hear the door close, and he laugh in the background, happy birthday, motherfucker. <laughs> I get inside, my mom hugs me, my dad walks in from my side, he was waiting in the car, 
And he's like, what happened? And I'm like, Carlos and Miguito, they scared me. And he's like, yo, man up, handle your business. <laughs> right? It sounded like solid advice, but that's what he said about everything. You know? <laughs> I said, yo, pops, how I tie my shoe? Man up and handle your business. <laughs> it was a gangster with one proverb, you know? And I'm like, yo, Pops, I need your help here, man. He's like, what happened? I'm like, Carlos and Miguito, they scared me. How do they scare you, Gaston? They scared me with the mask. What kind of mask is it? It's a Joker mask, Pops. You not paying attention to what's happening in these streets? I need your help out here, my G. It's real. He's like, calm down, Gaston. Who's the Joker scared of? I said, Batman, Pops. So he said, why don't you be Batman? I said, that's a good fucking idea. <laughs> and I believe that shit in my heart. He gave my mom some cash. We went to City Line. For those of you non-New Yorkers, City Line is the border of Brooklyn and Queens. It's a nice shopping area now, but back then it was a Foot Locker and a bunch of 99 cent stores, <laughs> you know? And we went out there to buy a costume. You know, I'm, I got kids. I spent $65 this year on my son's costume. So he could be Captain America. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> I told my wife I'm spending $65. He better be Captain America for graduation. <laughs> New Year's Day, I want to see this shit in rotation. <laughs> this is not what I got, though. I got a plastic mask. It had a white rubber band that went around. Lips was white, so I look like albino Batman all year. <laughs> you know? But I pulled that shit off. I was proud. You know, next day I woke up, I walked outside, and they scared me, and I ain't gonna fly, still ran inside crying. My mom grabbed me, she said, Gaston, hold up, baby. Stick to the plan. I said, you right, Ma. Y'all crushing this parenting thing, by the way. <laughs> oh, keep that up, man. And I went to my room, I put the mask on, and I started taking off my clothes, I had the Batman underwear, you know? <laughs> had the full ensemble. But I turned them around because the logo was on the ass part. I want them to know I meant business. You know? You got to see it coming. So I went to the front of the building, you know, and I opened the door. Carlos and Miguito was chatting with their boys. I did the, you know, the superhero pose and shit. Y'all Batman, and I ain't scared of you no more. And they just started laughing, which was fine because I could see Miguito's face but Carlos still had the Joker mask on. And I don't know if you've seen the movies, when Joker laughs, some real shit's about to go down. <laughs> it occurred to me, I hadn't thought through this plan. <laughs> but they just started high-fiving each other, talking mad shit for me. They're like, yo, my little cousin got balls, my little cousin's a G, my cousin ain't scared of nobody. Brooklyn got their own Batman now. <laughs> That felt great, man. I got cocky as shit. I was in the game now. I'm in. I went to school talking mad shit that day. Told all my classmates, hey, yo, listen. Some shit go down, don't worry about it. I got you covered. I can't explain because I got to take off my clothes. <laughs> but trust me, it's under control. You know? Now, what I didn't realize is when you tell this plan to, to your cousins, every time they were bored, which apparently is all the time for teenage drug dealers. <laughs> they would come up with wild shit for me to solve. They were like, yo, yo, my pet Rottweiler got stuck in the abandoned building. Go get Brooklyn Batman. <laughs> yo, Miss Brown, she's hallucinating again. Get Brooklyn Batman. <laughs> yo, the competing drug dealers, they on our block, man. Get Brooklyn Batman. <laughs> I ain't solved that last one but I was entertaining enough for them to end it amicably. Point being is, I was effective. <laughs> you know, but this went on for a while. My rep was now starting to get out there. I was sitting in class, my last name's Almonte, it starts with an A, so I always had that front seat by the door. And the kids would walk by the door, and I would hear them. And one kid was like, yo, that's that kid that think he Batman? <laughs> and the other kid would jump in, no, that kid is Batman. <laughs> Shit was real out there. But this is stressful. They don't tell you this shit. You gotta be Batman all the fucking time. He don't get no days off, like ever. I got shit to do, I'm in school, B. Three plus three is next week. Like this shit is hard, B. I'm stressed. 
I told my dad, yo, pops, I can't be Batman no more, man. It's just too much work. I need something easy like you got with this parenting thing. <laughs> and he's like, listen, gas store, you got over your fear, Miguito and Carlos leaving you alone. You can put the mask away, it's not that serious. And that's what I did. I retired the mask, I stopped being Batman. And that should have been the end of it, right? But a superhero's life is never easy. <laughs> you know. Now I was 15, my dad had bought a few more houses. You know, we, didn't, we moved away. But we decided to go back to visit my aunts that lived upstairs. Carlos had gone to jail. Miguito had moved down south to avoid some problems. I can't get into that here. <laughs> but he decided to come up to visit, a little family occasion. And I go up to Miguito, I was like, yo, Miguito. Not for nothing, but why would you keep scaring the fuck out of me with this damn mask all the time? And he's like, yo, that wasn't even our idea. That was your dad. <laughs> Excuse me? He said, yeah. He came up to us when, we, when he bought the house, and he was like, listen, I don't care if y'all are hustling in front of my house. Just make sure my son never want to hang out with you guys. And they interpreted that as let's scare the fuck out of this little kid every day. <laughs> and I talked to my dad about it. I was like, yo, Pops, this is true. You just fucking scared me on purpose. He's like, yeah. But it worked, right? And I learned two things. I learned one, turns out it wasn't even a Joker mask. It was a Beetlejuice mask. <laughs> I'm not scared of the Joker, I'm scared of Tim Burton movies. <laughs> you know? I found out recently, it's the same dude playing both characters. I was Michael Keaton fighting Michael Keaton. <laughs> but the second thing I realized, this whole time I was trying to be Batman, my dad is Batman. He didn't want any of the credit. He just wanted to get shit done. He wanted it solved. That shit was beautiful to me. You know, and now as an adult, you know, we, we work together a lot. We have a good relationship. About a month back, he came over to my house. Apparently, uh, one of my tenants, they had a break-in. Um, and this is the building that I live in. So he went over before I did. I was at work. He wanted to console my wife, told her about what we were going to do to, you know, fortify the home, make her feel comfortable. And I get home. And he's like, yo, Gastor, come over here for a second. And we walk into my daughter's room to get some privacy. And he's like, yo, when, when the robbers came in, why ain't you or your wife get the ratchet? I'm like, yo, Pop, I'm not a rapper. <laughs> I don't know what the ratchet is, man. <laughs> and then he just casually walked over to the wall. He banged the window pane and the machete came out. Then he went over to the heater, went, reached underneath, and he pulled out a gun. The ratchet, Gaston. I say, yo, Pop, it's my house. You got a gun in my house? And he's like, Gaston, I keep a gun in every house. <laughs> I'm like, but this is my daughter's room. And he's like, I know. <laughs> You're welcome. This whole time, I wanted to be Batman. It turns out I'm Alfred. <laughs> and I felt real touched that Batman finally decided to reveal himself to me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>